see. Now I'm gonna shoot the yellow one. See, it's easy. Just aim the gun and... All right, good morning, Wasteland. Mr. G back in the USA, and jet lag has hit me hard. It's two in the morning, so what better thing to do than make y'all a cross out video? And as requested, we are going to cover machine guns today. All the machine guns, basic ways to use them, build with them, and just review every single machine gun in the game. We are not going to cover auto cannons, and we are not going to cover whatever reapers and equalizers are one of those like uh, rotary auto cannons yeah we're not covering those today just basic machine guns we're going to start out with our little friend here the cord we all started out with the lm54 cord not a lot to say about it. it doesn't do a whole lot of damage it's got an optimal range of around 75 with a maximum range of around 300 and it's got the durability of wet toilet paper at 60 points of durability making its biggest weakness the fact that it's going to get blown right off your vehicle. Now, one of the most important things to know with machine guns is they're generally going to be considered a mid-range weapon. Um, they're going to do great anywhere between 50 and 75 uh, meters. You're not going to want to do this, which is just hold down the trigger with machine guns. One of the reasons you're going to not want to do that is look at the reticle. My accuracy goes down to nearly nothing. Um, what you're going to want to do with machine guns is you're going to want to just tap fire them. Every, it's just when you're at mid-range, you're going to want to tap fire these. If you're at close range, go ahead and go full Rambo and just unload. But anywhere around mid-range, you're going to definitely want to tap fire these. So our optimal range is right about here, right in between 50 and 75. Uh, one of the other reasons uh, that you're going to want to tap fire these is you're going to use coolers with these most often. Although radiators are definitely you're going to want at least one solidly good radiator one of the best parts that you guys can get uh, in the game is this one right here uh it's rnc rn seal thermostable now i don't usually recommend fusing things because it's a terrible idea just because the rng but there's only two fusion options for this one and one of those options increases module effectiveness by 30 percent which is huge just to see what the chances are. We got a 50-50 chance. Can we make another one while we're here? Are we going to get that lucky? Uh, success. Wait for it. And I, we got reinforced. So, rip. Okay. On to the next one. Vectors. These were my first blue weapons uh, in Crossout. And it's a great starter weapon for anyone that's new and you've just been playing a little bit and you've got enough coin to buy yourself a blue weapon. Go ahead and get one of these. It's basically a straight upgrade on the cord in every way. It's got a bigger hitbox, 50% more, well, not quite, a little bit more durability, um, but much better accuracy and range and fire rates. Um, you're going to see these on hover a lot. I mean, not a lot, but they're they're easy to use on seal clubby hover builds. You're gonna, they really work on anything, anything that's at least decently fast and mobile. You're not going to find vectors on big tanky builds, and that goes for most machine gun builds you're going to see in the game. So you can tap fire these pretty quickly. If you can hear my mouse clicking away like nobody's business, um, they do what they're meant to do. Okay, now next up is the piercer. And the piercer is a little bit different in that it falls into a slightly different category of rapid fire machine gun. These are machine guns that were released, oh, three, four months back, maybe six months back. And we'll talk about why that's important later, because they're going to get a special buff. So they don't have a lot of durability either, more than the Vector, a little bit more than the Vector. Their hitboxes are going to be really small, but the one thing you're going to notice is their fire rate is ridiculously high. Um, they do not have good accuracy. These are going to be better machine guns to use uh, in a fast vehicle, in a light vehicle, and you're going to want to stick to close range with these now closer than you would with the other ones because just take a look they're a little harder to tap fire because they just shoot so stupidly fast and you're going to want a decent amount of cooling with these as they are going to want to overheat really quickly you're going to see we hit the overheat threshold extremely fast on these ones i mean i mean even tap firing they the spread on these is a little bit ridiculous um, we're going to move to a different category of machine guns. Uh, these ones I like to call the goofy machine gun in a box category. So we're going to start off here with the Defender. And it has a limited firing arc. Which means you will often see this machine gun paired with an icebox cam. 
because the ice box is going to give us a bonus of 15 percent with weapons of a limited turn angle and that is actually that's a lot of extra damage guys uh, nothing to joke about there it's nice though that you can also easily fit this uh kind of weapon into your builds you can you know, merge it with the armor like we did on the front of this thing i just pulled this one on the x and um, those ones on the top are pretty should be armored better than they are but you know what they're not you'll also notice the firing angle is pretty good i mean you can go almost 45 degrees off to each side there i mean uh, you get decent firing arc with these guys as with any other machine guns you're going to want to make sure to continue tap firing them now we're going to bump into the purples here um take a look we've got the stm26 tackler um it's got an interesting perk in that when you're not shooting it it's got damage resistance so there you have it you can see the green there as soon as you let go you're going to definitely want to tap fire these that way you can at least make sure you're getting the damage resistance a little bit more but you're going to notice it takes about half a second for the damage resistance to pop back on there now there's another weapon just like the tackler let me go find it but slightly different uh that's, there it is the m29 protector it is similar but it says every successful hit on an enemy increases resistance to all types of damage but energy by two percent so in that regard really similar to the tackler although you're probably going to be running the damage resistance a little bit more with the m29 protector this is the most recent weapon in the category of guns in a box that i have seen lately next up onto the specter 2 it's pretty much a straight on upgrade from the vector um, but you'll notice a direct hit increases weapons damage by five percent so it's one of the few machine guns that gets a straight up damage perk making it you know one of the better ones i never really ran it a lot and my day, you don't see tons of Spectre builds out there, usually just because at this point most people are running other stuff. Um, are they either more powerful machine guns or they're down in the blues. For some reason, I just, I don't know. I don't see a ton of people running Spectres. But you can see it's fine at 100 meters. It does solid DPS. Um, nothing wrong with the Spectre at all. I just never really got into using it a ton. Moving on, we're going to get on to the Fidget, which is the purple version of the piercer essentially it's a rapid fire machine gun each projectile that hits the enemy slows down weapon heating by 30 percent so if you're landing shots on this one you're going to be able to shoot longer because it's going to overheat slower which is a good thing and you're going to notice it has the same sound or a similar sound to the piercer and accuracy is pretty poor on this but it spews out a stupid amount of bullets all right, we're going to talk a little bit about Aspects. Aspects are a legendary machine gun. You see these on higher power score builds. You'll often see them on legs or on hovers. Now, the kick with the Aspect is the higher the weapon's temperature, the higher its damage. Full heat damage increases by 50%. You're going to want to run at least one, um, one radiator on this thing, but you're definitely going to want to focus on coolers because you're going to want to make sure that you're not overheating it and that you're going to keep it right at the top of the damage threshold. This is one of the more difficult machine guns to use as you want to keep it right there at maximum damage perk. And really good players are going to be able to do that consistently with the aspect. Because if you're using it anywhere down here, you're almost losing half the damage potential on the aspects. So you'll see these in higher power scores and it really comes down to player skill on being able to use those effectively and keeping the perk at full charge. So definitely want to give yourself some coolers. You'll also see these coming in on hover builds. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is the Imp. Now, remember how I told you that the Fidget and the Piercer were rapid fire machine guns? That's important because of the perk on the Imp. Uh, it increases damage dealt by all rapid fire machine guns by 5%. Now, when I first got these, I thought that only applied to the Imp. It does not reply applies also to the Fidget and the piercer so this guy does just stupid amount of bullets come out of this thing but you're going to notice especially while moving um, accuracy is super bad i mean it's just it's not great but it's it's just a straight on upgrade from the fidget is essentially what this one is there you go it's just rain of bullets and look how inaccurate it gets if we just hold down left click 
Okay, one of my favorite, favorite weapons in the game is one that, sadly, most of you guys will never be able to afford because Gaijin needs to make relics uh, more accessible. They're ridiculously expensive, but that's the Punisher. Based off of an anti-aircraft gun, it's just a really solid machine gun. You're going to notice that its damage is good, its fire rate is good, its range isn't too bad, accuracy is okay, and time to overheat, pretty solid. Only takes four energy, has a solid amount of durability of 340, and every hit slows down enemy weapon turn speed. Let me show you what that looks like in game because it's fantastic. So we're going to spawn some bots on this one. You'll also see this paired often with Aegis. And when we go ahead and hit this guy, he's going to spark blue. Meaning, if you're seeing yourself turn blue, oh, he's dead already. I wish we could spawn bots of different hit points. Come on. Come on. Come on. Is he sparking? You see he's sparking there? Yep, his guns are going to have a little blue spark. That means that they cannot rotate as fast as they normally would. Um, yeah, these are pretty solid weapons. You don't need three of them. You can just run two. You'll often see people pair these with one Aegis or even two Aegis, which is pretty ridiculous. But we're going to be able to chew through these targets uh, stupidly fast. Uh, and we can probably even hit the longer range one there at 150 meters. Um, but you're definitely going to want to stick to mid-range with these as well. And they're just so easy to use, which is the nicest thing about machine guns. Yeah, the accuracy much worse way off at that distance, but you're still doing some damage. You'll see these guys on hover as well as on legs. Last thing we need to talk about is, of course, let's wait for it, we'll load up this guy, uh, which co-driver should be using. Perseus is very, very focused on machine guns. Um, you're going to get bonus to damage if you unlock that skill. Durability of 5%. Um, max spread reduction. And optimal range plus 5%. And maximum range plus 5%. That means 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 skills in Perseus. Do nothing but buff your machine guns. Now guys, I'm no expert on machine guns. I'm more of a cannon guy. Let me know if I missed anything in the comments. And I know there's a big debate over what's better, coolers or radiators. Uh, Cold Fire did an excellent video um, just talking about radiators versus coolers. You can go check it out. I will go ahead and put it on the end screen. And you guys let me know what you think is best for each build, whether it should have more coolers or more radiators or just one or the other. Um, I think with machine guns, though, we can all agree when you're tap firing, you're definitely going to want to run at least one decent cooler uh, on that build. If you guys found these kinds of builds useful, by I say build, I mean video, it's 2 a.m. here. I'm a little bit tired. Um, let me know if you want more guide videos like this where we just review weapons. We've gotten through most of them. If you need to see any other vids like this, come by the YouTube channel. I've got playlists on all the guide stuff. You can check it out there. I'm going to stop plugging myself. Uh, be good. Hug your moms. I'm going to catch you guys all later. We're doing the jump. Mr. G out. <laughs>